Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we have a little chill sketching video and I thought that it was a really nice day out. It was pretty cold, but it was really nice. So I thought, why not take the opportunity and go sketch at a coffee shop and take you guys with me? You guys are always saying that you would like to see more videos about me sketching outside and at coffee shops and things like that. And although it's a very scary video for me to make because I don't feel very comfortable filming in public, I'm here to provide, so. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Folks, it's the beginning of a new year, new opportunities, and if you, like me, are feeling inspired to take your creative business and career to the next level, or to finally learn that new skill, Skillshare has you covered. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes ready to take you to the next step in your creative journey. It is the perfect place to get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in impactful ways. Skillshare has everything you need to make 2024 the year you take your creative business to the next level. Skillshare has the largest online learning community for creatives with a wide spectrum of topics ranging from illustration, graphic design and photography to music, marketing and productivity. They have a world-class community that connects teachers and members and members to inspiration and feedback whilst using a learn by doing approach to teaching where each member can create and share a project after completing a class. If you find that you need more time to get through a class, that is also no problem. Skillshare is an on-demand platform with stackable lessons so members can learn at their own pace, no matter the skill level. They also have something called learning paths, which are curated sequential collections to help you master a specific skill or competency. They save you the time searching for where to start your learning journey and give you a clear direction on where to go. Learning paths also chart your progress, helping you keep motivated to reach your goal, as well as being a great way to find out about new industry pro teachers on Skillshare since they are curated by category. I've been following this learning path organization and planning for creative freelancers, which is classes from five different industry pros encompassing all things from bullet journaling, productivity, and project road mapping, which I'm sure will really help with my creative business this year. This year, invest in yourself and your goals by starting a learning journey on Skillshare to take your career, skills, or side hustle to the next level. Skillshare is giving a one month free trial to the first 500 people who use my link in the description. That is one month free of Skillshare for the first 500 people to use the link. Unlock your creativity today and try out Skillshare for yourself. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into the video. I ventured out into the snowy landscape or post snowy landscape, I guess, because it snowed the day before. So it was a really nice cozy day to go and sit in a nice cozy coffee shop and do some sketching. I brought my sketchbook, my pencil case with my essentials. I ordered myself a little coffee and I was ready to go. So my coffee of choice today was a decaf latte with oat milk. That's usually my go-to order. And I just added some sugar as well. Yeah, as I said, I always feel really uncomfortable filming in public. I, I always just feel, I don't know, really weird <laughs> having a camera out in public, especially at a coffee shop when there's other people there. But thankfully this coffee shop I practically live at. It's near where I live and it's a lovely little place and everyone there sort of knows me, like the staff and everything. So they're obviously very lovely and let me film in there and everyone was super chill. So hopefully filming this video and everything has made me feel a little bit more comfortable filming more of these. We'll see. <laughs> But it was definitely fun because I just got to sit down and immerse myself in a sketchbook page with some coloring pencils and just sat here for a few hours sketching out some really peaceful sort of designs. I wanted to go for a page that had a theme, so like more of like a magical sort of happy and peaceful sort of vibe to it and I just wanted to make really pretty spread really. Um, <laughs> so I started off with this drawing here of a uh, girl wearing a really beautiful sort of ornate old-timey dress. She's like holding these pages, it's inspired by a, a painting as well. 
which name escapes me, but I will put it on screen here. And yeah, I basically was just going on Pinterest and finding things that sort of spoke to me that I wanted to take as inspiration and draw out. And that's usually how my sketching sessions go especially because recently I've been sketching to sort of bring back my creativity and my inspiration since I sort of started drawing less and less for myself last year and I'm trying to get back into the swing of drawing more in my sketchbook for myself so yeah just trying to have a lot more fun in my sketchbook And I'm using my Arteza colored pencils for this, all these drawings. I just kind of picked out a selection of colors that had all the colors I might need and that I could mix together. And that's what I'm using for all these sketches today. So as I said, I didn't really go in with much of a plan besides I just wanted a really cute looking spread that made me feel really calm and cozy and comfortable and happy. So anything else was just kind of in the moment and in the flow state. So I used a lot of warm colors for this first drawing. I used, you know, started off with a yellow base and then went in with some reds and some oranges and things like that. Cause I also wanted to explore some different color palettes with my pencils with each different drawing on this spread. So I started off with sort of a warmer drawing here and just kind of going around after my first initial sketch with a very light yellow pencil to get sort of the anatomy down and the base sketch looking good. And then I went in with a reddish, like per like pink pencil to add in the line art and refine the sketch essentially. And I've been really loving this process in my sketchbook of using a yellow or like a really light blue color to do the base sketch and then going in with some different, more darker colors to refine the sketch, add shading, etc. I just think that using different colors throughout the sketching process creates a lot more dimension to the to the drawing and it adds all these different hues within the one single drawing and it just makes it look really interesting and like almost rainbow looking. So I've just been really enjoying the look of it and also gives me a lot more freedom with my sketches when I'm using a really light pencil like yellow because it means I can just experiment with, you know, different compositions and different sketch looks and stuff without worrying that I'll have to like erase all of it. So I just kept going in with this red crimson pencil to add in all the details and start start adding some shadows onto her like this, like some little cross hatching and just starting to place details into this sketch. And once I was happy with this level of detail and the level of contrast that I had achieved with the red pencil, I went in with a darker color still within a warm tone. So I went with this brown, like chocolate brown color. So it was still a warm, darker color. So I could still add some darker values to the drawing and basically start building up that contrast in the drawing. And this is usually when I'll start adding like the darkest shadows, like around the hair and, you know, increases and stuff around the drawing, especially on like clothing folds and things like that. And using this brown pencil and a black pencil together, just sort of playing around with the uh, shadows and things like that, it really helps to make the drawing look even more three dimensional and helps a lot with values. And yeah, that's also a reason I've been really loving using coloring pencils in my sketchbook as opposed to just a, um, a black pencil is that it ha it really forces me to think about values and color together. Cause obviously when I'm just using a graphite pencil or a black pencil, all I really have to think about is values, just, you know, where the highlights and the shadows go, making sure that there's enough contrast between the two to make the drawing have depth and so it's not flat. But when you're working with color, it is a basically a whole step 
extra that you have to think about so you're thinking about values and color on top of that and making sure that the colors you're picking not only are varied in value but also that they vary in warmth coolness and if they uh, they're complementary colors if they work together if they're within the same sort of color family or whether you don't want them to be in the same color family there's a lot more decisions at play and it allows me to experiment a lot more with colors and stuff. So I think it's a really fun exercise that I've been putting myself through when I sketch in my sketchbook because then it makes me a lot more comfortable with color choices and adding color to my pieces because I'm just a lot freer with, with within my sketchbook, obviously. Um, I, I get to experiment with color combinations and color layering, especially when I'm using colored pencils, because I, I like to work in a layering fashion when I work with colored pencils. As you can see here on the dress, I then went in with like this blue color, this very like cool, cool color, and it added this really fun contrast from all of the warm tones that I had gone in with previously and see using something like this like a very cool color adds already a huge amount of contrast to the rest of the drawing that you probably couldn't achieve with a color within the same warmth or hue so yeah it's things like these that you mainly start noticing and start learning when you allow yourself to play in this space with colors you get started learning like, oh, that thing actually changed the whole context of the piece or it, it changed the whole vibe of the drawing. That's so fun how just one color can change all that. It's, it's something that has been keeping me really inspired recently to draw in my sketchbook is just adding color. So I'm definitely going to be continuing that in my sketchbooking uh, journey this year. So over here on the right, next to that drawing, I wanted to do a portrait that was more close up and a bit bigger so I could focus more on coloring the facial features and skin tone using these sort of techniques. So I, again, I went in with like this RNG yellow pencil for the base sketch to get my anatomy right, just to sort of jot down the pose. Like I said, this layer I know doesn't have to be perfect, so that's why it's so comforting to go in and just sort of start feeling out the drawing and add in just some random shapes to sketch out every piece and element of the drawing and because i know that it doesn't have to be perfect it allows me space to create changes and tweak my drawing a lot more easily um, whereas if i just went straight in with a darker color i would feel a lot more apprehensive about having to erase and redraw any part of the drawing so yeah this just makes it a lot easier to fix mistakes and yeah, once I was happy with the initial sketch, I went in with a darker color. So again, with this sort of crimson color to start adding some darker outlines and basically adding the cleaner sketch outline of my drawing. And like I said, I wanted to add different hues or different types of color families within this spread. So this this drawing here, I wanted it to be a little bit more, you know, on the cooler tone and a little bit more on the sort of green side. So although I am using a lot of warm tones right now, as you can see, this red and brown and things like that, I am going to counterbalance all of this warmth and also all the, all the browns I'm going to use for her skin tone and everything like that. And basically, I'm going to experiment how I can use color to counterbalance a very warm skin tone and a very warm portrait with other elements. So 
so I thought it'd be a really fun exercise to try and use some cooler tones and try to create this balance between the really warm tones of her skin tone and her face and trying to see how I can counterbalance that to still make it a cool toned drawing. So you'll see soon how I go around that and manage to create that. So first of all, for her sweatshirt here and for her clothes, I went in with this really yellowy green, sort of just adding the initial sketch around her yellow base sketch that I did earlier and just started adding a base coat of, of green here. And then for her hair, I'm using a cool dark brown and started adding all the details to her hair and adding all of these like darker outlines to areas that I know are going to be shaded in a lot darker so around her eyes and things like that because this is going to be a darker skin tone so I'm just preemptively adding like a darker line art just so I can feel a bit freer when I'm adding in shadows and things like that. And I also went in and added some color to her eyes and her eyebrows. And then I started going in with that warm chocolate brown for some of the shadows around her face and started building up shadows slowly and lightly until I was happy with the placement of the shadows and then I would blend them out using my pencil lightly and sort of blending it out with the other areas and just kind of doing that process until I was happy with all the shadow placements on the face. As you can see, even though I have already used a lot of warm colors on this face and everything, the, the, the fact that I used that yellow green and that cooler brown for the hair, it's still creating that balance between the two. So I just kept going in adding the shadows and then adding more darker values using a black pencil here and there. And then I went in with that same like espresso brown. I think that's sort of the color of the, the, the pencil. So I went in with the espresso brown and started adding the details to the braids of her hair and the locks and things like that. And this really started bringing this sketch portrait together. I was just really happy with how the colors were coming together. And as you can see here, I'm just going in with the black pencil really sharpened as well to add in some finer details like freckles and some details on her eyelashes etc and that was kind of how I kept going with this sketch just adding more details to her hair and every once in a while where I felt like I needed some more depth to the hair or some a bigger like point of contrast I would go in with the black just to add that darker area sometimes even to just separate the braids from each other I would just use like a line of black just to sort of create that separation between them. And then I went in with that same green that I used for the sweater to add in some shadows on her clothing, some creating some clothing folds and just basically coloring in her sweater. And I was really happy with how it was looking. So I went back in with the black with, or like a really dark blue to add some darker shadows onto her sweater. And that, and that was it for that portrait. And then I had some empty spots on this page that I wanted to fill up with some sort of random drawings. So I actually drew out a really cute little teapot down here at the bottom and decided to add some really cute like daisies and flowers and just some bits that I could fill up the gaps of the drawing with. And since I wanted to practice a little bit of <laughs> coloring flowers and stuff like that with pencils, I thought why not? 
So here I just sketched out what I wanted the flower placements to be and the initial sketch for it and then I went in with that dark blue black pencil and added the outline of my teapot over there. And this was also a really fun challenge for me because I, I really wanted to challenge myself to draw glass in like a see-through glass object with pencils. Also just from memory, this I did not use a reference for this, so it was just a really fun exercise for me to figure out all of that. So I just went in with the black first and adding the darkest shadows and then adding basically the sketch for it. And then I added in some color afterwards, so added in this tea color inside the inside the pot. Started off with a really bright red and then started darkening it with some brown. So I'm thinking it's like like a red bush tea or something like that. Yeah, something something nice and cozy like that. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just here darkening the, the tea color and sort of going in with a darker brown to add shadows to the tea. <laughs> and again, it's just a really weird way to to have to think about rendering when it's like within glass and then you're also rendering a liquid. It's really interesting, but it was definitely fun and I was happy with how it turned out. Then I just kind of had fun pretty much just doodling the rest of the spread, adding these little daisies and just coloring in the flowers. And yeah, it was just a really good time. And by the time that I looked up, I had listened to like three podcast episodes and I was like so, so zen and just having a really good time with drawing and the coffee shop had filled up with people and I hadn't really noticed. So it was just a really nice relaxing morning that I highly recommend if you are interested in, you know, going out for a coffee shop and having a sketch, I would definitely recommend it because it's a really good time. And it's a really fun activity to romanticize your life with, so. I obviously finished off the sketch page with some stars here and there. And this was the final sketch page that I drew today. And I'm so, so happy with how it turned out. And I will hopefully be doing more of these because I had a really fun time. And it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be, so. <laughs> I really hope you enjoy this video. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this and I will see you in my next one. Bye-bye.